Hi everyone, my name is Sheila, a Children and Youth Services Librarian at Vancouver Island Regional Library, and I am back with you today for another special Thursday event. Uh, before we get started, I would like to acknowledge the traditional territories of the Indigenous peoples of each of the communities in our service area, and also those represented by people in attendance at today's virtual program. I am coming to you today from the unceded territory of the Snenemo people, whose historical relationship with the land continues to this day. And I am so excited to be able to welcome you to our special weekly summer reading club virtual event today, because our guest today is Monique Gray Smith. And Monique is an award-winning, best-selling author of books for children, youth, and adults. Today, she will be reading from her children's titles, My Heart Fills with Happiness, You Hold Me Up, and her soon to be released book, When We Are Kind. Monique is very well known for her storytelling, her spirit of generosity, and her belief that love is medicine. And Monique is of Cree, Lakota, and Scottish ancestry. So please join me in offering a really heartfelt, warm welcome to Monique Gray Smith. Hmm. Tanse, and thank you, Sheila, for the warm welcome and for your beautiful acknowledgement of, of these territories we live on, and especially you up in Shtanaimo territory, also known as Nanaimo, so beautiful. I am very blessed. I live in what we call Victoria, and where I live, it, it is the territory of the Wasanich people. And I am immensely grateful every single day to live here because one, it's absolutely beautiful that the ancestors, those who have come before us, who have been stewards of this land, have taken such precious care of the land and the water here. And I am grateful for that and grateful to be a steward myself in this time and to teach my children about the importance of taking care of the land and of the water and of the air and the sky, that all of those elements nurture us and help to fuel us to do and be good people in the world. As Sheila said, um, I am mixed heritage. My mom is Cree and Scottish and she comes from a small community, well, sort of small community in the Capel Valley of Saskatchewan called Pupikasis. And my dad is both Lakota and Scottish as well. And I have twins who are going into grade 12 this year. And that just seems so wild to me as a parent that, you know, they were these little itty bitty and then not so itty bitty and really now not so itty bitty. My son, I think is six foot one and my daughter is about five, five. So, and I'm like, I'm a really good day, five foot one. So I'm quite itty bitty to them now. I am really honored to be with you this afternoon and look forward to sharing a couple of books and maybe some stories in there. So I'm going to start with this book. It's called My Heart Fills with Happiness. And you can see this version is both in English and Nihio or Cree. Now, I wish I could read it to you today in both languages, but my Cree is not nearly good enough to read this to you in Cree yet, because next week, you know how some of you go to school as younger people, little people? Next week, I go back to school also, and I'm going to the University of Alberta through the computer to learn Cree, to deepen my Cree learning. So, but today you get it in English. So my heart fills with happiness. So I'm the author, I'm the person who wrote the words, and the illustrator, you can see her beautiful way of illustrating. Her name is Julie Flett, and she is of Cree and Métis ancestry. And she has so many beautiful books out. Her most recent book that I just love, and it's my go-to to give away as gifts, is called Bird Songs. And it is just a stunning, gorgeous book that not only did she do the pictures for, but she also wrote the book. That's how much of an extraordinary human being Julie Flett is. So let's get started. I'm gonna read it all the way through without stopping. And then I'm gonna go back and just look at a couple of the images and we'll talk about them a little bit more. So my heart fills with happiness. My heart 
fills with happiness when I see the face of someone I love. I smell bannock baking in the oven. I sing. My heart fills with happiness when I feel the sun dancing on my cheeks. I walk barefoot in the grass. I dance. My heart fills with happiness when I hold the hand of someone I love. I listen to stories. I drum. What fills your heart with happiness? And then this last gorgeous pace page that Julie drew that has no words to it. But you can see there the narwhal, the unicorn of the sea. And I love this image she's put here. I'm not sure if it's a father or a grandfather or an uncle with a little person up on their shoulders. And they're just watching what the narwhal is up to. I love that illustration she included there. So that's my heart fills with happiness. And I would love you tonight when you crawl into bed, whoever is tucking you in or who tucks you in before you go or says good night, to think about this last question. What fills your heart with happiness? and to have a little conversation with people, maybe even tonight at the dinner table, about what fills each other's hearts with happiness. And I'd love, if you look at this, I'm gonna put it as close as I can, this illustration of when I, I, my heart fills with happiness when I sing. Can you see Julie's done some clever things? If you look really close, this bush here almost looks like a wolf howling. And then she's hidden some things. You have to really have a good look in the grass for us to kind of discover. And then this one, my heart fills with happiness when I walk barefoot on the grass. I love that feeling of walking barefoot. Actually, I just came in from being outside and in my bare feet. Of course, we have to do it where it's safe, but there's something about feeling the grass between my toes that just reminds me that it's spring or summer and, and it feels different than when there's snow or frost on the ground. You can also see in this illustration how Julie has embedded the frog in there, the dragonflies. that through her illustrations, when you really pause and you look deeper, you see things that you might not have seen the first time. So for example, on the cover here, right up there on the right-hand side is a little ladybug. So I really, you know, if we were in person, I'd ask you like, what fills your heart with happiness? It's important that we, you know, in these times that we're living with the pandemic and all the ways that we aren't having our life like it used to be, 
that we have opportunities to still be and feel and do things and be around people that fill our hearts with happiness because happiness is important. And so sometimes we actually have to take steps or do things in an active way to make sure that we're experiencing happiness. It's a really important emotion. So the next book I'm gonna to read to you is called, You Hold Me Up. And again, in this version, you can see the Nihio, the Cree language underneath the English. And I just wanna show you in both My Heart Fills With Happiness and in this book, these books are published by Orca Book Publishing. And on the page it has the words, you'll see they've got English and then Cree, and then they've put space below on every page. So that if in your house, you speak a language other than English or Cree, you can put the words to this book on the pages so that your family can read the book in your language. I think it's really important when we're growing up that we experience and see ourselves in the books that we read and that people who might not understand us or have a very different culture read books that then they learn also about us or about each other. So this is You Hold Me Up. Again, I wrote the words, I'm the author. And Danielle Daniel, she's the illustrator. And you can see the very different styles that both of these women have. Beautiful, both do beautiful, beautiful work but in their different styles, they bring the words alive in different ways. So let's start with you hold me up. You hold me up when you are kind to me. When you share with me When you learn with me. You hold me up when you play with me. When you laugh with me. When you sing with me. You hold me up when you comfort me. When you listen to me. When you respect me. You hold me up. I hold you up. And we hold each other up. So that is you hold me up. So I'm gonna go in and look at a few more of the pages in depth. But before we do, I want to draw your attention to a couple of things that might be hard to see on the screen, but I'll bring them up close is just like, remember when I talked about with Julie, that in some of her illustrations, she kind of put things in that unless you look really close, you might miss. So for example, in this book, on the very front in the yellow,
you might see the hearts. So that's one example that I want to draw your attention to. And then let's look at these two young people. That you hold me up. You might notice on their lips that Danielle has put hearts on almost all of the characters in this book. She's put hearts as their lips, as reminders to us to speak in a good way and in a kind way and in a loving way. Because our words can really be, you know, medicine in some ways for people, for their hearts, especially if they're having a bad day or a rough day. Or our words can also really hurt somebody's feelings. So through all of her illustrations here, she put the hearts on people's lips. And if you look at this illustration she did, which is the last page, you see hearts in a number of places on their lips. Maybe you notice them when they're sitting crisscross. And so it's just another way to kind of look at the illustrations and think about what else do I see? I see the picture the first time, but then when I really look closer, what else do I see in the illustrations? And you know, it was really interesting to me last year, I was in Prince Edward Island and which is far away from where I live here in Victoria, probably almost as far as you can get in this place we call Canada from where I live. And I was reading My Heart Fills With Happiness to grade ones because all the grade ones in Canada last September got this book. So I was reading to grade ones and this little person put up his hand and he said to me, sometimes the person who draws the pictures tells the story better than the person who writes the words. And I thought that was really wise of him as a six-year-old to know that. And so that's why I want to kind of pause sometimes and really have you look at the illustrations because they're so beautiful, like this one. You hold me up when you learn with me. Right? And in this illustration, she doesn't have everybody sitting in a classroom to learn. Right? They're outside, they're on the land, they're together. There's all different ages. They're probably learning, listening to stories. So there's lots of ways to learn and being outside and watching the birds or watching a caterpillar or watching the ladybugs or, you know, if you're someplace and, you know, you can walk through the park and they have a pond, maybe there's goldfish in there. So there's lots of things we can learn from being outside including that we have four seasons. Each of those seasons bring their own gifts. And that's very much like us as human beings, you know, we all bring our own gifts. It's our way to make the world a better place. And, you know, depending how old you are watching this, you might have a sense of what your gifts are. And maybe, you know, as a young person, you don't know yet, but you will. So this is, the third book called When We Are Kind. And as Sheila said in the introduction, it is just out as an ebook. So you can get it at Orca Book Publishers as an ebook or wherever you might buy ebooks. And then in the fall, it will be out in hard. So right now, it's a bit flimsy. It will be a hard book like this one. Hard books are sometimes easier to read. So if it takes me a moment to turn the page, that's why. So when you look at this, you can see again, the different style of illustration. This artist, the illustrator, her name is Nicole Neardhart. And she grew up in a community called Santa Fe, which is in the United States. And she is Diné, or as some people will say Navajo. And so her illustrations in here really reflect her culture. And so I'm gonna read the story and then we're gonna go back again and look at some of the illustrations and see how different they are from You Hold Me Up and from My Heart Fills With Happiness. So again, I love this cover because it's just like that page when we looked at in You Hold Me Up, where it said, you know, you hold me up when we learn together. It showed different generations outside 
And here we are again with When We Are Kind, different generations outside, including, look at this little guy, right? How adorable. So let's begin, When We Are Kind. I am kind when I help my family. I am kind when I share with my friends. I am kind when I take my dog for an extra long walk. I am kind when I help my neighbor. I am kind when I bring food to my elders. I am kind when I only take from the earth what I need. I am kind when I take care of myself and get a good night's sleep. I feel joy when my family and I are kind. I feel happy when my friend is kind to me. I feel comforted when my cat is kind to me. I feel loved when my elders are kind to me. I feel grateful when the earth is kind to me. I feel respectful when I am kind to myself. When we are kind, we remember we are all related. So some of you will notice that in each three of the books, there is a page that's in the book that also is the cover of the book. So let's look at a few of Nicole's beautiful illustrations in here. I love this one. Look at all those vibrant colors. I am kind when I take my dog for an extra long walk. Right? You can see the mountain, the water, the flowers, and look at the joy there on the puppy's face. So much joy. 
And then this, this is a really important thing to think about, that I feel kind when I take from the earth only what I need. So, you know, in this time when the raspberries are getting ready, the blackberries are almost ready, the tayberries are ready, that when we go picking, that we only take what we need or what we're going to share with somebody else so that there is enough for as many people as possible or the animals that also come to feast on what's there. And then I'm kind when I get it. I'm kind when I take care of myself and get a good night's sleep. Now, I can remember being little and in the summertime being said, it's time for bed. And it was still fully daylight out and how hard it was to try to go to bed and fall asleep. But you know, like sleep is really important for us and it's one of the ways we take care of ourselves. And then let's look at one more. Well, see this one here that Nicole did, the illustration, I feel comforted when my cat is kind to me. That's exactly what our cat looks like. Our cat's name is Piper. And you know one of the things she likes? She's a little bit peculiar, which means, you know, sometimes a little bit odd. One of the things she likes is coffee and she likes it really hot. So that's what peculiar means. One wouldn't normally think that a cat might like coffee. They might like their treats, they might like their food, but not so much coffee. And then this is the last, one of the last ones I wanna go back to. And that is, I feel grateful when the earth is kind to me. And you can really see in this illustration Nicole's Navajo background, her ancestry and where she grew up. Because if this was drawn by somebody perhaps living here on the West Coast, they may draw the ocean, they may draw um, different trees, but you can see she's drawn what people call and are known as the three sisters, the corn, the squash, and the beans. So I wanted to show that to you because when we think about the illustrators, that lots of the ways that they bring the book alive is through their illustrations, but also how they bring themselves to the story shows up. So I just love, you know, that, that all three of these books, because of who the illustrators are and their incredible talents, that they make the images look so different from each other. And that's why when you go into the library and you wander about, one day we'll be doing that again. But if you go online and you choose your books, sometimes it's the cover. You go, oh, I want to read that book because of the illustrations, because of how the illustrator has brought it to life for you. So I just want one more time to come back to this last page. When we are kind, we remember that we're all related, that we're related to each other, we're related to those that fly, those that in some ways crawl, all everything in the universe we are related to, which is why in my teachings, one of the things I say at the end of something is all my relations, it's like an acknowledgement that every living thing, the trees, the flowers, the fish, the dogs, the cats, uh, us as human beings, that we are all related. And so therefore we have to take care of each other. And in When We Are Kind, there are examples about what it feels like to be kind and how it feels when somebody is kind to us also. Because it's important to allow people to be kind to us as well. Because when we are kind to somebody, it's like we're giving them a gift. And when we say, oh, no, 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 it can hurt somebody's feelings. So the importance of being open to kindness and receiving it as well as giving it. And so that's why both of these examples are in this book. 
So when we think about happiness, about holding each other up, like with dignity, like respecting, caring, sharing, listening to, comforting, playing with, laughing, all of those are ways to hold each other up. And around all of that is kindness and hope. And that's actually the next book that's just actually being drawn right now as we speak. And it's called I Hope. And it's being illustrated by an extraordinary human who's living in this place we call Montreal. Her name is Gabrielle Gamard. And she's illustrating I Hope, which is really a book about probably what many of the adults in your life hope for you. Things like clean water, healthy food, somebody to catch your tears when they're sad tears, somebody to play with, somebody who will help you learn all kinds of things about what do we hope for you. So I thank you today for tuning in, for being present, for your desire to love books. I love books and you know, it's interesting because I didn't grow up with books in my house. We didn't have books in my house. We didn't, we were a family that didn't have that ability. And, you know, I've never thought about this until just now, but I'm going to have to ask my mom why we never went to the library. I'm going to have to ask her that. Um, both of my parents worked two jobs, so that might have been part of why we didn't go to the library, but I'm going to have to ask her. But it wasn't until I was in grade eight when the first books came into our house and they were then called encyclopedias. So the adults in your life might remember the encyclopedias, but they were these really big, thick books. And each book had a letter from the alphabet or a couple letters. So the letter A encyclopedia had everything that started with the A in the encyclopedia. Antelopes, alfalfa, all kinds of things you would find in the encyclopedia under A. And I can remember when we got those in our house that I would read them and read them and read them because I was craving books, but I didn't know it until the books came. So I find it really interesting that today, you know, one of the things I do is, is write books because they weren't a part of my life. And so I am grateful that whoever is sitting with you and watching this with you, that they've made books important in your life because books and being able to read for one, but also being able to hear stories because the books tell stories, but in our families, there's so many stories. And so sometimes it's really important to sit around the dinner table or sit outside by the fire if you're able to and listen to the stories of your family because in there, there's so much beauty in our family stories. And sometimes they end up in books. So, and you know, at the libraries, you can get audio books, you can get CDs, you can get all kinds of ways to engage in stories. And that's what I think about the library, is that they're like this great big house full of stories. So I hope that you and your family whoever you might spend time with who is an adult or an older person, that you're able to visit the library in whatever way that's possible at these times, to visit that house of stories and have a whole bundle of stories to keep you company this summer. And that through the summer, you make up some of your own stories. So I thank you for being with you this afternoon, for the privilege of sharing a couple stories with you. I thank you for tuning in and I look forward to our paths crossing one day. Ah, Matokiwas, all my relations. Thank you so much, Monique. Um, and please let Monique know how much you enjoyed um, her reading and the, her words of wisdom by um, letting her know in the comments below this video. And um, so thank you from the bottom of our hearts, Monique Gray-Smith. And we do still have more Summer Reading Club fun to come in the upcoming weeks. And if you go to our website at virl.bc.ca, you can follow the links to Summer Reading Club and 
uh, learn about what activities we have coming up. You can still register if you haven't registered. And also um, to follow up with something that Monique said, we have a very large number of electronic audiobooks and books that you can borrow from our collection, even if you aren't able to get out from of your house to get out to your library. Um, yes, and while you're at our website, please don't forget to join our Facebook Summer Reading Club group and follow us on Instagram and Twitter and sign up for our e-newsletter and maybe a library card. And thank you again for coming. And next week, we will see you on Tuesday instead of Thursday. And we will be welcoming astronaut Jenny Seide Gibbons, who will be talking about her experiences. And we will be taking questions from you. So watch for that on our website. Bye.